What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can catch me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. And today's video is a look into the upside potential of a guy who's currently being drafted as an RB4, as the RB37 on underdog right now, but who will probably finish as an RB2. And that's Chase Edmonds. I got three reasons why I am smashing Chase Edmonds at his current ADP. Let's get into it. <laughs> Reason number one why I love Chase Edmonds is that he is a good runner who fits the Mike McDaniel scheme that he will be playing in in Miami this season. In the last four years, so since Chase Edmonds entered the league, he has been a very efficient runner. Uh, one way that I like to measure that is box adjusted efficiency rating, which essentially measures how efficient are you on a per carry basis relative to the per carry output of the rest of the running backs in the offensive system that you're operating in relative to the box counts that you're seeing. So anything above 100% means that you're outdoing the collective other backs on your team to whatever degree. Anything under 100% is the same thing in the opposite direction, you know, kind of normalized for the box counts that you're seeing, the, the defensive fronts that you're running against. And in the last four years, Chase Edmonds has had a box adjusted efficiency rating of at least 109% three of the last four years. In 2019, it was 109. In 2020, it was 111.5. And in 2021, it was 162.5. That means the average carry for Chase Edmonds in Arizona last year was worth 62% more output than the collective other backs. That was second in the entire league behind Rashad Penny. In 2020, that was in the 66th percentile, 2019, 62nd percentile, and the only year in his career so far where he hasn't posted a box-adjusted efficiency rating above 100% was his rookie season when his box-adjusted efficiency rating was 97.2%, but he was succeeding on 7% greater of his carries that year, even despite like not being quite as efficient as his teammates. So overall, a little bit less efficient than his teammates, but far more successful, far more consistent on a per-carry basis that year. That was an 80 first percentile relative success rate so efficient in three of the last four years successful in the one year that he wasn't he's just a really good runner even going back to college he averaged 3.2 yards per carry greater than the other backs at Fordham which yeah is an FCS school but among running backs who've been drafted from FCS schools in at least the last 10 years that's number one out of all of them better than Tariq Cohen better than James Robinson better than David Johnson better than Austin Eckler. Like, Chase Edmonds is one of the best FCS running backs we've ever seen. He's been a really good running back in the NFL. And the second part of this is that Mike McDaniel in this Kyle Shanahan, like, outside zone scheme is something that Chase Edmonds is going to fit into beautifully. So since Mike McDaniel and Kyle Shanahan have been in San Francisco, starting in 2017 through 2021, they've run outside zone, according to Sports Info Solutions, at 19.7%. So 20% of their runs have been outside zone. And I, I've looked at a couple other places that are not Sports Info Solutions and seen a little bit of disparity in the numbers there. It's just based on, you know, like their charting process and what they're considering an outside zone run. There's a little subject subjectivity to that. And so maybe 19.7% is not gospel, you know, up to interpretation of, of, of the game charters. But during his career from 2018 to 2021, Chase Edmonds with the Cardinals has had 21% of his carries come on outside zone schemed runs. So essentially an equivalent amount of outside zone being run by the 49ers and by at least Chase Edmonds with the Cardinals. And so he has familiarity with this scheme. And then he's been really good on outside zone runs. If you just look at his team relative efficiency stats on outside zone runs, he's averaged 0.47 yards per carry greater than other Cardinals running backs in his career on outside zone runs. If that was just like his normal yards per carry plus mark, that would be in the 71st percentile. His box adjusted efficiency rating on outside zone runs for his career, 115.2%. That would be in the 70th percentile if, if it accounted for all of his carries. And his relative success rate on outside zone runs so far in his career is 3.8%. He's succeeding on almost 4% greater of his outside zone runs than other running backs in Arizona have since 2018. That would be in the 69th percentile. So so he's carried the ball a lot in outside zone at the same rate that the 49ers have. And he's been really successful in outside zone as well as being really successful on his carries overall. And the third part of this is, okay, like maybe you, you're not a numbers guy, like, okay, whatever the numbers say, let's, let's watch, let's watch Chase Edmonds play some football. 
a guy I follow on Twitter who I look to quite a bit for like film supplement to like the data analysis that I do is at J Moyer FB. He used to do a lot of work with uh, Matt Waldman. I think he currently does work with the fantasy football astronauts. I believe he's like an actual like real life football coach in some capacity. Um, I believe at the high school level, but he tweeted when Chase Edmonds signed with the Dolphins that quote, Chase Edmonds fits the Shanahan mold that McDaniel is using to create his offense. Explosive cutback runner should do well if Miami can create the running space that the 49ers currently have. Who knows if Miami can create the running space that the 49ers currently have? I don't know. But really all we're looking for here is for Chase Edmonds to like rise to the top of this kind of messy backfield and take over a large share of the touches. And this dude is a guy I really respect, you know, smart film analyst. He knows not only like player evaluation, but like scheme. He, you know, he's an actual football coach and he believes that Chase Edmonds skill set fits with what McDaniel wants to do in the running game. He also called him this clear running back scheme archetype indicates to me that McDaniel plans to feed Chase. That was in a follow-up tweet. Chase Edmonds has been really good as a runner, really good in outside zone, and smart film analysts believe that he is a is a scheme fit in outside zone. He's a dynamic runner, strong scheme fit. Check. That's point one. Point number two of why I love Chase Edmonds in fantasy this year is that he's a good receiver who now has a smart and creative coach who can maximize that skill set. The last two years, Chase Edmonds had 53 and 43 receptions on 11.1% and 13.3% target shares that rank 14th and 8th in the league, respectively, in the last two seasons. He had the 8th highest target share among running backs in the entire league last year on a per-game basis. And I've been working with a lot of, like, advanced receiving metrics for running backs based on the route tree that they have in their inventory. And um, I developed a metric that kind of measures the, the diversity of routes that, that running backs are running based on the standard deviation of, you know, the, the percentage of, of their total routes that each route type makes up. And so if you do that for each route, you can then find the standard deviation between all those percentages, indicating how, you know, specialized a guy is in, in, a, few, in a few routes or how diverse his overall route tree is given involvement in a lot of different kinds of routes. And going back to 2018, Chase Edmonds' career, his percentile rank in route diversity. So, so what sort of variety of routes is he running? 74th percentile as a rookie, 90th percentile in 2019, 61st in 2020, 73rd in 21. So consistently near the top of the league in route diversity. And if you just look at look at the percentage of like basic routes that he's running, just like swing passes, screen passes, you know, check downs to the flat, things like that. His, his percentile rank in portion of his total routes that are made up of just like basic routes, 34th, 26th, 10th, 45th. He's not running a lot of basic routes. He's running a large variety of routes. And then even though in the last two years, the Cardinals have had Kyler Murray at quarterback, who's a running quarterback. And overall, the Cardinals have had the seventh lowest target share to running backs in the entire league in both 2020 and 2021. Like this is a team that has not thrown to running backs very often at all in the last two years. Given the routes that he's running and the, you know, league-wide targets per route run data on these routes that Chase Edmonds is, is running, he's been targeted at 9.2% more often than expected in 2020 and 2.8% more often than expected in 2021. So despite having a quarterback that generally doesn't throw to running backs in an offense that isn't throwing to running backs on a per route basis, given the types of routes that he's running, Chase Edmonds is earning a lot of targets more than expected given league wide data. So he's running a diverse route tree. He's running advanced routes and he's being targeted at a high rate on those routes. Check, check, check. This dude is a good receiver. So now back to McDaniel. McDaniel knows how to scheme running backs as receivers. Going back to 2017, 13 49ers running backs have had at least 10 targets in a season during that time frame. That doesn't really mean anything, but that's just like the sample size of guys who had like reasonable roles in the passing game for the 49ers going back to when McDaniels and Shanahan started in San Francisco. 13 dudes had at least 10 targets at running back during that time frame. How many of those guys had upper percentile ranks in route diversity? 11 of 13 of them were above the 68th percentile. The only two guys who were not were Elijah Mitchell last season, whose route diversity was in the 52nd percentile, so still above average, and Alfred Morris in 2018, who was over the hill by then, and who we know has never been some sort of like 
dynamic receiving weapon. He was in the 32nd percentile in route diversity that year. Other than that, every running back in the last, what is that, five years for the 49ers in this McDaniel Shanahan offense, every running back who's been reasonably involved in the passing game has run at least a 68th percentile route tree in like route diversity. So they're being schemed in creative ways, in diverse ways. Another metric I like to look at is route value. And basically how how I calculate route value is on any given route, given, you know, target rates and yards per reception rates of those routes, any given route type has like a yards per route run league-wide, you know, given league-wide data. And so we can calculate route value or, or the value of a player's route tree based on the yards per route run value of each route that he's running and then using like a weighted average of like how frequently is he running each route type, we can find the the relative value of his entire route tree on like a yards per route run basis. And going back to 2017, 10 out of 13 San Francisco running backs had route value on their entire route tree above the 60th percentile. So they're running valuable routes, they're running diverse routes, and the rate at which they're being targeted is 8.3% more often than we would expect given league-wide like target rates on the kinds of routes they're running. And that's with Jimmy Garoppolo, CJ Beathard, and Nick Mullins all seeing at least 12 starts in that time frame. So this isn't just like Jimmy G checks down all the time. This is this is the way the offense is designed. Like these guys are running diverse routes, high value routes, and being targeted frequently. The third part of this is that Tua Tungavailoa has shown a willingness to check down or throw to running backs, especially last season. Despite the Dolphins offense having the sixth lowest running back target share in 2021, that's really just because their running backs weren't involved in running routes. But Tua was targeting running backs at a high rate when they were running routes. 35.9% more often than expected was he targeting Miles Gaskin given the routes that he was running. That's in the 93rd percentile. And he was targeting Salvin Ahmed 26.4% more often than expected given the routes he was running. That's in the 82nd percentile. Those are the only two guys in Miami last year at running back who played at least six games. Like they were the only two guys who stuck around for most of the season, were involved in the passing game. Tua, despite a low target share to running backs overall, on a per route basis was targeting both of those guys at very high rates. So Chase Edmonds is now a very skilled receiver with a coach who can maximize those talents and a quarterback willing to check down to running backs. Check, check, check. The third point and the last point is that Chase Edmonds is on an incredibly weak depth chart here in Miami. Let's go through the other running backs currently on the roster and their the average amount of money that they're making each year of their contract. Raheem Mostert is making the, the most money of the other guys. He's making $2.12 million per year. He's a guy who's going to be comfortable with this Shanahan McDaniel system, given that he played in San Francisco for a while, but he hurt his knee last year, missed 16 games. He's talked about being, you know, close to 100% now. I would anticipate him being healthy by the time the season starts, but he is an older dude who missed almost all of last season and is not being paid that much money. Sony Michelle making 1.75 mil was 28th last year among lead backs in composite efficiency score, which takes their ranks in box adjusted efficiency rating and their ranks in uh, relative success rate, takes the percentile ranks there, averages them. So it's kind of like an overview of like how efficient was this player relative to the offensive environment he was in. Among 32 guys who led their team in carries last year, Sonny Michel was 28th in that category. So very bad. Lynn Bowden is making the third most money here. He's making 1.2 mil a year. He might be a wide receiver. Like, I don't even know if he plays running back. He played wide receiver last year. And then Salvin Ahmed's making less than a mil. He averaged less than three yards per carry last year. He sucks. Zaquandre White is making 853K, but he's an undrafted rookie free agent who got no guaranteed money, which we know to matter. And I like his talent, but... He's an undrafted free agent who got no guaranteed money. There's not there's not even a guarantee that he makes this team. Patrick Laird is another guy on the team. He's making 850K. He had four touches in six games last year. Jared Dokes is an undrafted free agent from last season who's making like 700K. He didn't even see the field last season. And then the guy making the least amount of money in this offense is actually Miles Gaskin, who's making 650K a year. And he himself was 24th out of, the, out of 32 lead backs in composite efficiency score last season. He was very bad. 
Then we get to Chase Edmonds. That's like eight dudes who are making almost no money. None of them are a sure thing. And then we got Chase Edmonds, who's been really good all four years of his career as both a runner and receiver. He's making $6.05 million on average under his new contract with the Dolphins, which is as much as the top four guys, the other top four guys combined. He's making more than them combined. So relatively large investment for Chase Edmonds here. Wide open depth chart. The consensus seems to be that this is going to be like some sort of committee. And I am pretty on board with that being the sort of usage we see here. But Chase Edmonds was the RB26 in points per game last season while playing the 1B role to James Conner. Like he does not need super lead back volume to make an impact. He was already a borderline RB2 while sharing carries with another guy in Arizona. While he had the number 22 snap share and the number 28 opportunity share in the league. Not a large role. He was still effective and useful in fantasy football. And now he should be the clear leader of whatever sort of committee they have in Miami. He's got the best mix of health and talent as a pure runner among all the backs in this roster. He's easily the best receiver among all the backs in this roster. He fits perfectly in the scheme that McDaniel's going to want to run. And he's being paid more than the next four highest paid running backs on the roster combined. He's currently being drafted as the RB 37 on underdog. That's outside of RB3 range. He's the first RB4 off the board behind clear number twos in their offense like Tony Pollard, Kareem Hunt, behind guys who are probably going to be the number, like Rashad Penny and Kenneth Walker are both going ahead of him. Either that's a committee or one of those guys is a clear RB2. They're both being taken ahead of Chase Edmonds. Melvin Gordon's being taken ahead of Chase Edmonds. He's kind of in the same situation. Devin Singletary and James Cook are both being taken ahead of Chase Edmonds on underdog. That's probably a committee. And he's going well after other guys in similar situations, like probably the lead of some sort of committee, like Miles Sanders and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Show me what the big difference is in those situations. Maybe the offense is are a little bit better, but we know volume is king. I believe Chase Edmonds has the talent and the scheme fit to rise to the top of this committee and make a legitimate impact in fantasy football. He's an RB2, currently being drafted as an RB4. Hey.